Hi everyone, Ian here. In this video, I'm going to go over 10 workflow enhancements in Cavalry 1.1. Now there aren't just 10 improvements, there are in fact many more than that, and I'll be doing a Medium article that goes over some improvements that aren't featured in this video, and I'll link to that article in the description below. Let's get started with Bake Animation. So you can use Bake Animation to convert procedural animation into keyframed animation. And in the scene, we have a noise behavior connected to the position channel of this ellipse. The noise is set to loop, by the way. And if we want to turn this animation into keyframes, all we need to do is select the position attribute, go up to the animation menu and choose Bake Animation. And now you can see that we have the position X and position Y attributes, and there are keyframes on those channels. So let's go into the graph editor and take a look at that. And what we can do now is we can just edit this animation as if it was created by hand. Another use case for baking animation is when you want to convert magic easing into keyframes. Here we have a simple scene with just two keyframes, uh, an ellipse moving from left to right. And we have a spring out on the magic easing on the first keyframe. So we spring out of that keyframe. And what we can do here is select the position X attribute, go to the animation menu and then go bake animation, which gives us keyframes, which we can then go in and edit. So say you notice that the, the first key doesn't actually have a very strong ease on it. We can increase the strength of that ourselves. We could even maybe get rid of that to make this a little bit more dramatic. And then when we play that back, we see you have our slower start and then we snap into the bounce. So not the bounce, it's a spring. <laughs> uh, so that's another use case for uh, using the bake animation. Cavalry will only show attributes in the scene window if they have animation on them. So for example, on this duplicator layer, we have shape position Y, rotation and radius, all of which have keyframes and therefore those attributes are shown in here. However, we'll show a layer regardless of whether it has any keyframe animation on it or not. So for example, the circle layer has no keyframe animation, but we still show it in here. Well, in Cavalry 1.1, we've added a way to quickly filter out anything that doesn't have keyframes, and you can do that by pushing the U key on the keyboard. So if you hit U, only the layers with keyframe animation will show. However, there's a bit more to this mode than that. The first thing to note is that it's selection based. So if you select a layer and then push the U key, you'll simply solo that layer in the scene window. So you won't see anything else. If you hit the U key again to toggle out of that mode, let's select something that has no keyframes on it. So if we select this layer up at the top here, and then we push the U key, that layer will appear in our soloed selection. And the reason for that is that we want this to be useful for when people are doing procedural animation as well, and therefore we include those uh, layers with no keyframes on them if you've selected them. So let's toggle out of this mode. Well, let's say, for example, I want to see the hierarchy for this duplicator. So this duplicator has uh, several layers underneath it. Let's say I want to see the animated hierarchy. Well, all I need to do then is hold down the Alt key when hitting U, and that will show me the animated hierarchy of the thing that I had selected, or the things that I had selected. So let's back out of this mode again by hitting the U key. Well, what happens if I want to see everything? So I want to see all of the children, regardless or not of whether they've got keyframe animation on them. Well, the way to do that is Alt, Shift, and U, and that will put you into this mode, but show you the entire hierarchy. So notice stagger and random, they don't have any keyframes, but they've also been included. Next up, we have the control center, which can be found in the window menu. By default, the control center is blank, but the idea is that you promote attributes in here, and then once in here, you can use just this window to control the important aspects of your scene. So let's show this in action by creating a piece of text, and then to add an attribute to the control center, you can right click and just choose add to control center. And then once in the control center, you can just edit that. You can add multiple attributes in here. To remove an attribute, you just use the same menu option. And you can add attributes from across different layers. So a little peek behind the curtain here. This is the scene we use to create the intros for our YouTube videos. If I go to the control center here, you'll see that it's already been set up. Now this scene was set up by Chris and he told me that everything I need is in the control center and he's right. I can just edit everything in here that's important in this scene. So I can change the version number, I can change the type of video. So we have feature, getting started, deep dive project. I can change the title of the video. I can change this to control center. And I can change the number of tags at the bottom. So let's say I want two tags in this video and I want the first one to be workflow and I want the second one to be attributes. I can do that. And then everything is updated and I can just render out my intro. 
Now, what's great about this is that I didn't create this scene and I don't need to understand how this scene works because everything that's pertinent has been promoted to the control center. Now, this is useful for when you're sharing scenes, but it's also useful for yourself. If you're going to come back to a scene a few weeks or a few months down the line and you want to know what's important, you can put it in the control center and you'll thank yourself later. Another neat workflow improvement is that the select tool now has two modes, group and individual. When you have multiple items selected, in group mode, everything will rotate from the center of the group, likewise for scaling. In individual mode, everything will rotate and scale from its own individual pivot point. You can now turn on the grid in the view menu. There's also a shortcut for that, Alt G. You can also use this button in the viewport controls to turn on the grid. And there's a popover where you can change the settings. For example, you can change the grid color in here. And you can change the grid size. You can now reorder array attributes in Cavalry. You can tell an array attribute because it has a number before the name. See here we have 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. These correspond to the numbers on this text shape, 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. You'll see how number 1 is yellow. Let's take this color and move it up one place. So to do that, you right click on the attribute you want to move, go to the reorder menu, and then you can either move it to the top, up one, down one, or to the bottom. Let's move it up one. And now you can see that the zero is yellow and the one is red. There's now a quick way to add a background to a layer. You simply right click on it in the viewport and choose add background to selected. This creates a rectangle shape and a bounding box. On the bounding box, you can expand the background and then you can use the rectangle shape to round the corners. And of course, this being cavalry, everything's live. You can now copy and paste images into cavalry. To do this, copy an image, head on into cavalry and paste. Cavalry will save the image to your project assets folder. We can see that here. If you don't have a project set, Cavalry will save the image with your scene, and if you haven't saved your scene, it will save it to the desktop. You can now separate SVGs into their constituent layers when adding them to a comp in Cavalry. To demo this, let's first add an SVG to our scene. And now, when we drag this into our viewport or scene window, we'll be shown a modal dialog asking us whether we want an asset layer or separate layers. Asset layers can be updated, separate layers are editable. I'll go through them both now so you can see the benefits of each. So asset layers. When we've added the SVGs in our asset layer, we get one layer in our scene window. That's for all the SVG shapes. The benefit of this is that if we go and edit the SVG in some way, let's say we change the color, we can then update that by right clicking on the asset and choosing reload. Notice how the color is updated. Now let's add this as separate layers. So when we drag it into the viewport, we can choose separate layers. Now we get a group and then the two SVG layers are underneath, each with their layer names. We can move these around. We can in fact edit their materials and we can even edit their shapes. You can now copy the easing from one keyframe to another. You can also copy just a single Bezier handle from one keyframe to another if you want to. So let's take this example here where I have one keyframe and let's say I want to take the easing from this one and paste it onto this one. To do that, I need to select the keyframe I want to copy, go right click and copy easing. Then I can select another keyframe and either go up to the edit menu and choose paste or I can use the keyboard shortcut for that. And now we have our easing pasted onto that keyframe. You can also paste onto several keyframes at once, like so. Let's say we just want to copy the right Bezier you can just select it, right click, go copy Bezier handle, and then you select the other keyframe and you hit paste again. You can also paste one Bezier onto multiple keyframes. Copying and pasting easing also works in the time editor. So for example, if I was to set some magic easing in here, we could then copy that by right clicking and go and copy easing and paste that onto another keyframe like so.